Have I come to the right meeting? Yes, you have. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's always good nice. to check. <laughs> But these chins are getting worse by the day. <laughs> same, Jeff. Same. <laughs> I need to grow a beard like my colleagues here. That's the answer. <laughs> Like oh. some of your colleagues, perhaps. Yeah, well, that's right. Al doesn't have one, but he's lost all that weight. So he has extra chin. <laughs> You're bad guys, bad. <laughs> okay, I need to stop laughing. No, it's good. I was expecting one of you to have, almost have like a kitten or some kind of an animal face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter and lowers I, your blood pressure. It does, <laughs> right? It does. I could I could use that. Okay, so we're almost on the hour here. Live now. We're live now, okay. And we're approaching seven o'clock. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our regular regular council meeting of Monday, February the 22nd. I'd like to thank all the members of the public that are, that are joining virtually with us tonight on Teams and also those of you at home watching from the webcast. Uh, as we begin tonight, I do wish to acknowledge that we are meeting virtually on the lands of the South Nation. Uh, our first item of business is item five, Ministerial Order M192. That council is holding this meeting without members of the public in attendance under Ministerial Order M192, as council chambers cannot safely accommodate the unknown number of public participants wishing to attend, and that council is committed to ensuring openness, transparency, accessibility, and accountability through the submission of written comments and the provision of live and recorded broadcasts of the meeting. So I do require a mover for this motion. So move by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor Logans. Okay, thank you. Any questions, comments? I'll call the question then. All those in favor, please. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next item is item six, approval of the agenda. And that would be that the agenda for, oh, good evening, Mr. Wagner. Um, if you could please just uh, turn off your video and mute, I will call you when we hit the public comment period. Thank you. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. OK, Council, so back to approval of the agenda. So that would be that the agenda for February 22nd regular meeting of Council be adopted along with the inclusion of the new business and supplementary information. Moved by Councillor Bateman and seconded by Councillor Logans. Any comments? Seeing none, all in favour? And that too is carried unanimous. Thank you. OK. So that um, brings us straight into item seven, which is our public and statutory hearings. And just while we have some members of the public joining us, I'm just going to pull out the statement. I'm just. Um, OK, good evening uh, and thank you for joining with us. If I could please just ask you to mute your mute yourselves and turn off your video. Uh, we will, our corporate officer will call for public comments in just a little bit. Um, thank you. So I'm just going to pull up the statement here. Okay. So this statement will be for the two items that we have under 7.1 and 7.2. So these public hearings are being held pursuant to the Local Government Act. At this public hearing, any person who believes that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the bylaw that are the subject of this hearing. Copies of written uh, copies of written submissions received to date are available. 
It is important that all who speak at this hearing restrict their remarks to matters contained in the bylaw, and it is my responsibility as chair of this hearing to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. For those of you who wish to speak at the appropriate time, please commence your address to council by cl clearly stating your name and municipality of residence. Then you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposed bylaw. Submissions must be received before or during the public hearing in order to be considered by council. Members of council may, if they so wish, ask questions of you following your presentation or submission. However, the main function of council members this evening is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw with individual citizens. Everyone who deems his or her interest in property to be affected shall be given the opportunity to be heard at this hearing. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making his or her views known. Please note that this hearing forms part of tonight's regular meeting of council and as such is being video recorded. Videos and their contents, including any personal information disclosed during the hearing, will be posted on the district's website. So that officially opens the public hearing and I'll, council, I'll turn your attention please to item 7.1, uh, which will be for 6671 Wadhams Way. And I will now turn this over to our staff, please. Thank you. Just begin with sharing my screen here. Okay. Are you able to see the uh, subject property map on the screen? Yes, I we can. Yes. Um, yeah. I suppose that's as large as you can get it to be. I mean, if, if that's the way it is, then that's fine. Make sure I got the right. There, is that, uh, is that better? No. Mr. Paolo, we're seeing a web page. Yeah, it looks like the district's web page. Jeff, is your speaker on? That looks like um, that's your staff presentation there. Uh, we can see your notes and the map is a little bit small. Okay. Looks like my monitors ended up being switched around. So I'll just try this again here. Huh. I think you just need to start your presentation. Sorry, I'm not sure what's uh, happening here tonight with this. Matthew, on your bottom toolbar, there's something that says notes. Is that something you can toggle off? Let's see. Is 
Is it showing anything on the screen? It's showing your presentation, but it's it's very small. It's it's it needs you need to put it into a different mode, I think, into presentation mode. Yeah, I think you have to go back to home and then uh, start the presentation. Here, I'm going to close this. Just for members of the public, we're just working through a technological issue. It'll just be a moment, please. Thank you for your patience. Is that working? Yep. Oh, OK, thank you, everybody. <laughs> that looks good. All right, uh, so the uh, the districts uh, initiated a rezoning application for the eastern half of uh, 6671 uh, Wadhams Way, which uh, we've been referring to as Lot A. And this proposal includes an amendment to the east half of the property, which uh, currently has a P2 zoning, which is community facilities, and it's proposed to be rezoned to the CD15 comprehensive de uh, development zone for the purposes of accommodating expanded uses. The current zoning includes community, civic, assembly, institutional uses appropriate to the west half of the site. However, the east half of the site requires a zoning amendment to allow for expanded uses of the lands, including multifamily residential, limited commercial options, along with institutional uses. A comprehensive development zone is the best fit for this site in order to meet the community's objectives as articulated in the Lot A design charrette for this community owned asset. So here's just the uh, the map of zoning in the area, including the subject property. Uh, the property itself is about 2.13 hectares in size with approximately 1.2 hectares uh, being the subject of the application. The property is well situated for pedestrian and cycling options via the multi-use trail on Wadhams Way. The neighborhood is currently a mixed use of residential, commercial, and institutional uses and complementing the CD zone, which is to be proposed. The property is designated town center within the official community plan where there is a strong support for higher density residential development, a wide range of housing options and affordable and easily accessible residential units. The proposed rezoning is in keeping with the vision of furthering town center revitalization, promotion of mixed use development and a strong civic presence located in Souks town center. Rezoning of the property to a CD zone will position the district of Souk for many opportunities to redevelop and continue to energize the north end of the town center area. Staff are bringing forward this application as a result of the 2019 charrette, which recommended that the east half uh, be uh, rezoned to include these uh, expanded uses. The CD15 zone incorporates new commercial uses, including indoor amusement facility, art gallery, bakery, commercial exhibit, commercial school, health services, personal services, office space, and retail. Staff are recommending that multifamily residential units be permitted above the first story where the building fronts a roadway in order to activate the street level and improve the pedestrian experience. Staff are also recommending the provision of limited home-based business for those residential units. In this CD zone, staff are introducing the requirement for a minimum height of two stories with a maximum of six stories as seen elsewhere in the town center area zoning. Lot A represents a once in a generation opportunity to develop a property for the community with the density requirements and design elements that the community would like to see. Staff are confident that the minimum height restriction of two stories will help to achieve the expected intensity on the site, as well as to use district owned lands efficiently and strategically. In terms of the setbacks proposed for the site, a more generous setback is detailed for areas adjacent to existing single family neighborhoods, and the proposed 4.5 meter setback will allow appropriate separation of uses, which will be complemented by enacting official community plan design guidelines for vegetative buffering in the site design. Staff are of the opinion that the proposed zone provides a balanced approach to achieving community goals 
while allowing the expanded uses to achieve a vibrant town center. Uh, with that, staff uh, supports the recommendation uh, for um, proceeding with the third reading. And with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, but thank you very much, Mr. Paolo. I'll just turn to members of council to see if there's any questions that you may have of staff, and then I'll ask our corporate officer to introduce members of the public that are registered. So are there any questions? Okay, I see Councillor Bateman. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, through you, your worship, to Mr. Paolo. Um, I asked this back on January 25th, so please refresh my memory about your answer, and that was whether words like boutique independent retail were considered um, for this bylaw as opposed to the generalized retail um, classification. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. so with uh, with retail type uses, boutique would uh, probably come under the classification of the type of uh, uses or the operation of the business itself. So boutique would uh, potentially be one of the, the, the ground level commercial uses that could be um, operating within any of the developments that would be on this portion of, of the site and, and envisioned as an ideal attraction to the Lot A area. Okay, I'll, I'll expand that out a bit then. So what about words like independent souk owned and operated uh, retail? In independent, so so somebody that uh, that operates a business that's a, that's a souk resident or or a business itself operating that, yeah. Those, yeah. So, so those those uses would be specific um, to the actual ownership or operation of the site. So um, in in using the site being a district uh, owned property, uh, the, there would be a necessary um, agreement with the operator to to enter into the use of those properties. And so if that was a desire. Uh, of the public and ultimately count council, they could uh, could have those types of uses in there. Uh, specifically within the zoning itself, it doesn't necessarily specify um, how the ownership is to be undertaken for that commercial use. Okay, so so if I'm clear, then a a, a potential um, retailer like Starbucks, for example, um, would have the opportunity to locate on Lot A. There there is potential for a friend. For any type of franchise, because th those are specific to ownership uh, inquiries, as opposed to specific just land use um, designation uh, uses, such as just general retail. Those those are just specific land uses that the the zoning would accommodate. So, how would this zone differ from uh, Evergreen Mall, for example, which does have the full and clear right to bring in any client it wishes? Here's a piece of public land. Do we have some say over? If, if I may, in this case, the, the district is the landlord, so the district would be able to choose its tenants. OK, that, that's Thank correct. You. Right, right. whereas we don't have the ability to control uh, the Evergreen Mall, say they're an independent landlord that would be able to lease out as long as it, the use complied with the zone. In this case, we're the landlord or the district is the landlord and it would be up to the district and the council of the day to make those decisions and to either enter into lease agreements or, or uh, you know, at their discretion and go through a process accordingly. Um, Mr. McKinnis, I see you may have something to add and then I'll go to Councillor Beddoes. Yes, Your Worship, we will have one lease agreement, which will be uh, with the building that's being considered right now with the Souk Regions Community Health Network. We would have the, the lease agreement with them. They would in turn lease out the commercial spaces. So we could put some provisions in the lease agreement we have with Searchin, uh, but we would not be signing lease agreements with the, the individual businesses that are on the ground floor. Okay, thank you. Councillor Beddoes, please. Yeah, I am um, a little confused about uh, my understanding. There was a water course on that property at one time, and, which would have all sorts of setbacks to it. Is there a water course identified on that portion of uh, Lot A? Uh, That's the I'll staff. turn that to staff because I seem to recall that um, through the due diligence process. Uh, if you could remind us, please, on those findings. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to remind her. So yeah, as as part of the reporting, there were those uh, environmental features that uh, that were identified on the site. However, um, 
as part of any proposal that will come forward, it could be taken into consideration and not be uh, considered a, a detriment to any future proposal for development. So it would just be a matter of um, considering how the overall site layout can accommodate that and properly directing uh, pre and post runoff rates if, if it was something related to stormwater. Uh, thank you. I, I just uh, I, I haven't seen it identified on a map, but I suspect there is one somewhere that would sh show, you know, what kind of stream is it or uh, any information about it? Uh, I'd have to go back and, and go through the original lot A uh, report to, to see if there was a, a map that uh, that could demonstrate or or sorry, the um, the uh, the diligence report for the property, sure. but in terms of developability for the site, it wasn't something that was identified as any concerns for uh, hindering any kind of development on the parcel, and that ultimately led to the overall concept that's uh, considered for lot A. Okay, thank you. Other questions from members of council? Okay, so I'll turn to our corporate officer, please. Um, just to introduce any I, any members of the public that are registered to speak on this and council within the supplementary information there is a letter from the Beck from Mr. Doug and Susan Beckson I believe if I have that correct it is in your uh, in the supplemental thank you um over to our corporate officer please yes. uh, the first person I had registered to speak is George Holmes but I do not believe he has joined the meeting, so I'll just give him an opportunity to speak up. Mr. Holmes, if you're with us, please turn your microphone off and address council. No response. Uh, the only other person I have registered to speak to this item is Mrs. Lewers. Please go ahead, Mrs. Lewers. Thank you. Can't turn my camera on. Oh, there it is. Okay. I have a couple questions too. Uh, Councillor Beddles brought up the wetland and uh, or the creek. And as you know, I've always known that there was a creek there. And if you look on your map, even the map that uh, Mr. Powell sh showed up there, if you look a little further and you see that there's a river or a creek that comes across the the southeast side of Wadham's Farm. So it starts on Wadhams and ends on Wadhams, but it actually used to go across. And when they put up, put Wadhams way in, they, there actually was an issue there. The people on the other side of Church Road were quite upset because of the, of the water coming on from Wadhams way. And there was a culvert put in. I just recall these things. And, uh, and so that creek just ends there. And if you've been watching what's happening on Wadham's Way, if you've been watching, uh, uh, or not Wadham's Way, on, on Lot A, you would see that, they, that they're working in water and they had to pump the water out so they could actually function in there. And they have to haul in huge amounts of gravel and rock before they can even drive in with their equipment. The, the, the rocks go in and the, then the truck goes over top. It's, I mean, it's a swamp, it really is. And I and and but the other part is that it's a waterway, and we're we had signed an agreement, uh, I believe in 2016 or 17, the, the district signed an agreement with uh, the province to protect our waterways and that we protect all the water that goes uh, uh, into our harbor and basin, protecting our harbor and basement basin. And I would ask that we respect that and and. I've asked before about that creek, and it's never been identified. I spent a lot of time down at the museum looking through maps. Um, unfortunately, um, the young lady there wasn't wasn't aware of all the different maps, and Alita wasn't available. But I would like us to look at that. And besides the water issue, um, I I don't think government should be building anything period. And and why is this being managed by Soup Region Community Health Initiative? Uh, what's their expertise in this? This should be done by private enterprise. 
if it was to be rezoned, if the district wanted to rezone it and sell it, cash in like a lot of people up zone and sell, fine. But I don't think that the district should be managing this. Uh, it's especially in these times. It's such um, uh, the economic times. I don't think it's something that you should, we should be taking on as a district. It's a big cost to the taxpayers, and if things go awry, the taxpayer is held holding the handles. Um, and and as far as needs, uh, you just approved 232. Uh, homes on Wadham's farm, 175 units on Drennan, and 75 on on Charters. Do we need more units? Uh, it further on in here it says that it's the seniors for seniors, but it doesn't. It's kind of a mixed thing. I don't know what's going on here. But um, if if there's a need for for seniors, I, well, there is for a senior center. And for, but also the monies are set aside for a senior center and a youth center. So we have to be careful that those are both covered because that's what our bylaw says. So I, I'm, I'm concerned that we're jumping ahead here with a big costly venture and the, the cost of, of um, especially with that wet area, you have to drive your pylons down really deep and that, that, that's a big cost. And it, you might think, of, the same as the library, I'm sure they're they're already over cost what they initially went in because not knowing really what they're up against because there's a lot of rock going in there. Um, uh, it, I don't know if you recall, but I recall when when they at the double laning when they put a lot of rock in there in the in a wet in the wet bog and uh, the whole after two years the whole road sunk and they had to dig up the whole road and redo it. And there's properties I know of in soup where people have, you know, the houses were built and then uh, the houses sunk and, and uh, you know, corners split and, and uh, <laughs> walls came apart. It, I, I don't think this is something that the district should take on. It's a big, big thing to handle. I think it's over our heads. Okay. Oh, Thank and you. another question I had too was, um, there was a contract with the library before as well, and that contract with the library uh, said that after five years they would own the property. I, that's just a question. Is that still what the contract says, or has that, that changed? No, they're 50-year leases, and the 50? district will own 50, five, zero oh, okay. is that's the cool. lease to the library. Oh, okay. So the life, of the, the life of the building, and it would be the same in this case. So you would lease this to to super, super. Yes. Okay, that isn't made clear in here at all, and I don't think the public knows that as well. And and again, what's their expertise in in managing this? Um, there's no one other. Yeah, and that are yeah. Too many things. Oh, I, I know with Wadham's Way, that, that creek. And if you, oh, I'll just show you on here. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? No? I, I can see it, but unfortunately, I can't really see it. I, I, right. I can't okay. see it enough to really understand what I'm looking at. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, because it shows. It no, that's no good. I, I tried to get it to see if there was a map at, at the district too. There isn't a full map there with it that shows the creeks. Yeah, it's all digital, which is unfortunate. But if you look, if your staff would pull up CD14-C, you would that's the property, that's the Waterman's property with the creek. You can see it in the presentation that Mr. Powell did. Just briefly, you can see the, the creek coming across. Wadham's farm. So uh, I, I think that has to be explored further. I know I've, I've asked the question many, many times and um, it's been skirted, but there is a creek there. And obviously, if you look at it, you can see it. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Lures. Um, is there any response from staff back to Ms. Lures' comments? Um, or I'll go to Councillor Logan's. I just see your hand is up. 
Thanks. Uh, yes, I can't comment to all of those questions, but one that I did want to mention was that all of the units, Ms. Lures, that have been approved so far um, were already included in the housing needs assessment, so there still is a very great need for um, housing stock that isn't single family. Thank so you for that. Okay, so that's that is for house, housing single families? Housing stock that is not single family uh, is still very much needed in Souk. We know that even after this this last uh, approval of the 175 and 75 units. So, Ms. Lewis, as I stated, the units that have been approved to date have already been included in the housing needs assessment. So those were already taken into consideration. And above and beyond those units, there is an incredible need for housing that is not single family in Souk. That housing needs assessment was done in 2018, correct? Yeah, correct. Yes, and, and I'll just, in, I'll just interrupt units. here. Um, thank you. Is that we were aware of the those projects and those units coming online through the funding partners, the Canadian government, the federal government, BC Housing, the CRD, and it's just taken some time for them to get to the point now where they're making announcements. So, oh, okay. Councillor Logan's is correct, uh, as well as the the units located on by the Knox Vision Society. We've known for some time that these units were coming and they were all factored in and that was all public information. It's just taken, it just takes a while to get to a point. The announcements now came about because now there's actual work happening. The contractors are physically on the ground. So this latest announcement is kind of old news for us oh, okay. in that way. Thank you for that. So does that mean also then that seniors uh, are not part of the 175 and 75 units? Well, seniors would have the option to live in those units. Right. Uh, however, there is a need for seniors to also locate closer to amenities in the town, as many are no longer able to drive. And this is more close proximity. And the Souk Region Community Health Network has done extensive outreach and work uh, with, through the age friendly community and others to uh, to do that. And in terms of their qualifications, uh, one of the directors has built hospitals for most of his career. So I'm confident that they are fully capable of what they've taken on. They have the expertise through their board of directors. They're not just community volunteers. Many have had uh, extensive backgrounds um, in this field, and that's why they put it forward. And in terms of expenses, it is grant contingent. We're just hoping for a positive outcome. And for the Creek, we did do um, a lot of due diligence on on the ground and so this would be incorporated like any development as they go forward the siting of the location and how they're going to address uh the water and so forth but i'll have staff comment a little bit further on that mr mckinnis thank thank you your worship but i do want to uh just uh let the public know that there was a uh, report done by a qualified en uh, environmental professional and uh, that report, um, I'll just read a sentence from the final uh, of the report, is that a review of the existing surface water data, including data from the CRD, Souk, and Habitat Wizard, show no records of any surface water flow or fish occurrence in the pro project area. No ditches or other standing water re were detected throughout the rest of the pro pro property. So uh, I hope that that uh, is sufficient enough to uh, not continue to skirt the issue. Well, yes, uh, I, I, I smile at that because if you look at it, there's a, there's a lake down there. But and also we had a professional um, speak on the Waterman's Way property about the creek there. And if you again, if you look at that CD 14 C, if you look at that map, you'll see the creek clearly goes across Waterman's Way, the Thrub Creek that uh, the expert said was a ditch. So uh, I'm just saying it's right on your own map, on our own map. So okay, thank okay. you very thank much. You. Thank you very much, Ms. Lures. Um, Ms. Machada, are there other? I'm wondering if Mr. Holmes has joined this meeting. No, no one else to... has joined. Okay, and Ms. Lures was our only registered speaker on this item. That's correct. Okay, I'm just used to calling the third time, so I just want to ensure that I've covered off everyone possible. Okay, so for that, um, 
Council will move to item 7.2 um, because once the public hearing is closed, then Council will deliberate on third reading. And right now the public is hearing is open for both of these. So in terms of 7.2, I'll just turn to Councillor Lajeunesse. Um, I understand that you're going to declare conflict on this. I'll just give you the mic, please. Yes, I have to recuse myself. The applicant is a family member. OK, thank you, Councillor Lajeunesse. So we'll have you leave the meeting and then when the appropriate time comes, we'll phone you to have you back in. OK, so staff um, as. So Councillor Lajeunesse, you, OK, there he goes. OK, thank you. Uh, so staff, I'll turn it over to you for 2109 Mowich Drive, Mowich Drive, please. I think I got it this time. Excellent, but it's right. black. There's <laughs> OK, there we are. Thank you. OK, perfect. <laughs> uh, the District of Souk has uh, received a, a zoning a bylaw amendment application for rezoning of a property located at 2109 Mouch Drive from rural residential RU4 to neighborhood rural residential RU5 for the purposes of creating two uh, new lots consisting of one lot and the remainder. Council approved first and second reading of the zoning amendment at its uh, regular meeting on January 25th and directed staff to schedule tonight's uh, public hearing. So here's just the map of this uh, subject property area and surrounding area with zoning. Subject properties uh, 0.56 hectares and located in the North Cicinos neighborhood of Souk. There's an existing home and a few accessory buildings on the property that uh, are intended to remain. The surrounding neighborhood is a mix of rural, uh, residential and agricultural properties. Generally, the surrounding neighborhood is treated with clearings for house sites and small agricultural operations. This rezoning application uh, requests that the subject property re be rezoned from the RU4 to RU5 uh, zone. And the subject parcel will allow for uh, lot sizes uh, to be a minimum of 2,500 square meters and enable the creation of uh, the two lots that are proposed. Uh, and as mentioned, it would be the uh, one new lot and the remainder lot. Now here's a site plan of how the proposed subdivision uh, is to be designed. Uh, section 4.7.3 of the official community plan requires that a minimum of 10% of the total of any proposed bare land or strata single family residential subdivisions be uh, for affordable housing lots. The applicants acknowledge the importance of affordable housing and has volunteered to contribute $3,000. Uh, staff support cash in lieu as proposed by the applicant, and this will be secured through the process of registering a uh, section 219 covenant against the title. The uh, part of the application, the applicants provided a rationale for the rezoning amendment request, stating that the piece of land that they are proposing to subdivide meets the minimum criteria based on the RU5 gateway residential rezoning. The proposed subdivision layout creating one new lot with one lot remaining will have no uh, negative environmental impacts and aligns with the existing residential neighborhood of single family dwellings on Mallage Drive. Uh, staff are supportive of third reading, and with that, that concludes my presentation for this application. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Palo. I'll just uh, turn to members of council to see if you have any questions of staff at this moment. OK, seeing no hands or no comments, we'll turn to members of the public and council. I'll just draw your attention that in the regular package, there's correspondence um, from Ms. Eve, uh, Ms. Rutherford, uh, Mr. and Ms. Ralph, and then in the supplementals, um, Mr. and Mrs. Banner and Mr. Collard. So I'll turn now to our corporate officer to introduce any members of the public that are here for this item, please. Yes, our first registered speaker, and I believe there are two of them speaking from the same video feed, is Don Brown and his wife, Christine. OK, Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Please go ahead. We have no comment other than to support the 
the application for the uh, rezoning. OK, well, thank you very much and thank you for joining with us virtually tonight. We appreciate that very much. OK, and I suppose you can turn your video off and mute again. Thank you. Um, and that was our only member of the public. Is that correct, Ms. Machado? I believe Mrs. Lures was going to speak to this application as well. OK, Ms. Lures, go ahead, please. I, I was just going to say I approve of it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lures. OK, seeing that there's no other members of the public on teams or on the phone, I will now officially close the public hearing and Council, what I would like to do and use sort of my privilege as chair is I'm going to ask that we go to 7.2 first. Uh, we can do with Malwich Drive and then we'll phone uh, Councillor Lajeunesse back so they don't have to keep coming in and out of the meeting. OK, so here we have this item here. We've received our report and the recommendation from staff as well as letters and commentary from members of the public in support. So the recommendation is that Council give third reading to the bylaw cited as zoning amendment bylaw number 807 600 84 2021. So moved. OK, moved by Councillor Bateman and seconded by Councillor St. Pierre. Any comments, Councillor Bateman as the mover? No, other than the fact that that's a beautiful neighborhood. It's this is quite unlike the uh, woodland subdivision that we approved back early on in our tenure and um, seemed very straightforward, full support of the neighborhood. And Carol and I did get into Mowich Park yesterday and that is glorious one of our secret parks right around the corner thank you excellent thank you for sharing it it's just no longer a secret <laughs> that's okay <laughs> other members of the council wish to speak i'll turn to our seconder councillor st pierre no are any other comments from members of council seeing none okay i'll call the question then all those in favor please and that's carried unanimously thank you so now um would a member of council, if you could just someone able to text Councillor Lajeunesse. OK, thank you, Councillor McMath. And we'll just wait for Councillor Lajeunesse to rejoin the meeting and then we'll go to item 7.1. He's coming. OK. And just for the member of the public who's speaking, yes, I'll confirm with you just while we're waiting for Councillor Lajeunesse that after we get to item 10 is our pu public question and comment period. So we'll call you at that time uh, and and that you you will be speaking during the public portion of the meeting. OK, welcome back, Councillor Lajeunesse. Uh, and we are, we reordered the agenda, so we are right now, we've dealt with Mowich and we're now going to 6671 Wadhams Way. And so Council, you've received the staff report and have heard some comments from members of the public. And here the recommendation is that Council give third reading to the bylaw cited as zoning amendment bylaw number 801-600-82-2021. So I'll look for a mover, moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor Logans. Any comments, Councillor St. Pierre is the mover? Yes, I'm actually really excited by this project. I'm really happy that we're looking at some good examples of smart growth and the district is taking the lead and actually making it happen. Uh, I think this is wonderful news for the community, especially in terms of actually providing services and amenities in the core and having the district have some influence on what we can actually put in there. So I'm fully in support of this project and I thank staff for its work. Thank you, Councillor St. Pierre. Councillor Logans. 
good. OK, any other comments from members of the public? Councillor Bateman, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I just um, again, I'd like to echo Councillor St. Pierre and the this has been a remarkably professional process with uh, all that public input at the outset. Um, with the Laude Charette process, the signing of that lease agreement with the library 100 years, uh, that's district land, Mrs. Lewis, just so you know, and the um, the assessments that went into lo looking at at the property in terms of um, geotechnical, environmental assessments, preliminary civil design, tree inventory and management plan. So there's been a lot of due process. So I would suggest that the district is in fact mature enough now with the with the staff team we have to uh, move forward on a project of this, this size and dimension. Thank you, Councillor Bateman. Other members of council have any comments? And I am in full support as well, and I agree with what um, both Councillor St. Pierre and Bateman have said, and uh, I won't repeat what they've said, just agree with their sentiments expressed there. Okay, so I'll call the question then. All those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Okay, thank you everyone. So that concludes item seven, so we're on to item eight. Uh, adoption of meeting minutes. So here we have our special council meeting from February the 2nd and our regular council meeting from February the 8th. And these minutes are here to be adopted as circulated. So I'll look for a mover, please. Moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor uh, who's seconding the adoption of minutes. Councillor Bateman, thank you. Any corrections or comments? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please. And that's carried unanimously, thank you. Item nine, please, is the report of our Chief Administrative Officer. So I'll turn to Mr. McInnes, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Just uh, one verbal update today. Uh, I was asked to report back to Council on the requirement to send further tax notices to the homeowners that uh, have current tax arrears because of the 2020 tax deferment changes. Uh, the short answer is no, we don't have a legislative requirement to do so. Um, but I suggest that we do send a notice to the four property owners with tax arrears due to the deferment uh, process in 2020. And the reason for this suggestion is that because if the arrears are still in place when the 2021 tax notices uh, go out, uh, then they will not be eligible for renewal of the 2021 tax deferment uh, pro program. So I think it's incumbent upon us to make them uh, make it known that if that arrears is still in place when the new tax notices go out. They're not going to be eligible for the program. OK, thank you for the follow up, Mr. McInnes. I um, have to say I find this to be somewhat frustrating because we started the, this process in June, May or June of last year, and then it's just we just can't get an answer. And um, the latest response I received was from the Minister of Finance who acknowledged that I had sent a new letter, but that the file should be answered by the Ministry of Municipal Affairs, who was also CC'd on the letter. So I'd like them just to answer the letter rather than this back and forth game. So I'm comfortable sending out a letter to our residents, but I also want to send another letter to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and provide that as background because I need I want our residents to know that we are doing absolutely everything possible and we're waiting on a provincial answer here rather than it look like we're not following up because it's it's every month we're following up here and I just want that answer. So I'm I'm comfortable with that, but I also want to send another letter and just request like please just do this and alleviate this hardship from our residents. I mean, understood, it's just and, uh, yeah. understood, and we certainly share your frustration. And it's just um, for those residents, it's. You know, I feel for them because these are residents that have always paid their taxes on time and had always filled out the process on time, and it was the province that changed the system. And then this is the glitch that's occurred here, and so I just want to absolutely make it clear that 
we are doing ev absolutely everything we can. And just so that is all laid out uh, as we send more letters. Okay. Is there a, a, a motion that you require from us, Mr. McInnes, so we can just follow up? No, if we're going to send the notices, that's our normal practice. So we'll continue on with our no normal practice. Uh, so we're good. Okay, thank you. It's just the language of the letter is what's important at this <clears throat> point. Okay, understood. Thank you. So now we'll go to item 10, which is our public question and comment period. So this space is reserved for all items on the agenda except for the public hearings as those had their own public portion in there and so this is where i'll call on mr wagner i know that you're here and uh, you're here to speak on the reconsideration item uh, which comes a little bit later in tonight's agenda for 6947 grant road west and i'll turn it over to you and you have two minutes please thank you Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillors. I appreciate the opportunity to present. Um, in particular for this application is we do meet the provincial requirements and I want to make sure that's really clear. They've been established by professionals. We're well beyond the 10 meter setback um, that's approved by the province. We're beyond the 15 meter setback. We're actually closer to double the approved setback from the seasonal creek. And so what is up for discussion on this tonight is is the new bylaw with the town of Souk, and that's if uh, we can have the house uh, close to the creek, um, not the decks, the parking, the fences, things like that, um, landscaping that. It's just, can the house be placed uh, there? And we meet that. Not only do we meet it, we exceed it by almost double what the QEP and what the provincial says. And then uh, during construction, to, to, there was some questions raised about how do things get enforced? Well, during construction, we have provincial guidelines to follow. We're liable if we don't follow those guidelines. Your building inspectors also, they, they enforce that. Um, they're gonna come in and make sure that we're gonna do this. And these are people from the town of Souk um, that uh, will ensure we follow these guidelines. So we are respecting and we're following what we're asked to be done by the province, by the professionals regarding the seasonal creek. But what's really at stake here is something that doesn't get discussed much, and that's affordable housing. And I'm in a business, manufactured houses are some of the most affordable way that people can actually own a home, that they can have their own place, their own little backyard, that type of thing. And it's a place that's affordable for nurses in your community. Matter of fact, I have a nurse right now who's seventh generation in the town of Souk, who would like to live in this house if it's approved. There's firefighters, policemen, all sorts of people that these communities need. And if we don't make affordable housing a priority that they can have a place to live in, they're gonna go somewhere else where it's more affordable because people just can't afford to stay here. It's an expensive island to live on. And I'm again in a business that sees this. And so what I'm asking you to consider is the fact that yes, we meet all of the requirements. We meet everything we're supposed to do it's all there. We're not going to break the rules. We're not gonna trying to do anything by the off the record. It's all going to be by the book and your building inspectors are going to ensure that we do that. But what I'm asking for is a unanimous vote from mayor and council for this in the interest of creating affordable housing. And that's what I'd like to see happen here tonight. And I'm hoping that you'll agree with me on that. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Okay, if you want to just uh, stay with us, um, you know, and we're, given that we're a local government, I'll just share that um, all we need is the vote to carry. Doesn't necessarily need to be unanimous. A carried vote moves ahead. Um, so I'll just, I just want to make that comment there that uh, I don't, I'm not going to predict the outcome here, but if it's not unanimous, but it carries, then you're still able to progress accordingly with your application. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you, I Mr. Just, Wagner. Mayor, if I can just say one thing, I think it shows something to your community if everybody votes unanimous, because affordable housing is really important. And I will tell you this, if this goes through, there's a whole nother section up at the front that I'll also like to develop that the park owners give me permission where an old septic was. And that's a whole nother area that also could be opened up that again, will meet all the provincial and professional guidelines. But it's these these are important topics. It's it's more than just the fact that we're more than double the setback from a seasonal creek. Yep, understood. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Mushada, do we have other members of the public registered to speak tonight? No, Your Worship, we do not. 
Okay. Uh, we're moving on in the agenda. So, Mr. Wagner, if I could please ask you to turn your video off. Um, just so that the screen, thank you. It just helps with um, seeing council for, for voting. Okay, so our next item here is item 11, which is our consent agenda. And the recommendation is that items 11.1 .1 through 11.3 be adopted by general consent. So look for a mover, please. Moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor Beddoes. Any comments from anyone? Nope, I'll call the question. All those in favor, please. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Next item is item 12 reports. The first item here is 12.1, the SUC program of the arts recommendation. Uh, and there's a recommendation here for the SUC program of the arts committee. So I'll turn to either staff. Would it be staff that'll just introduce this? I will speak or to Or Councillor Lajeunesse. Okay, go yeah, ahead, so, please, Council. So the there was um, uh, the SPA committee had a um, a local resident, former owners of the Sioux Harbor House, uh, they would like to donate a piece of artwork that, that was displayed at the Harbor House. Um, it's a totem pole, I think it's about 15 feet in height. Um, the original artist is a local, a well-known local artist, um, and they would they would like to remediate the, the piece before we receive it or after we've received it. I'm not quite clear on that just yet. Um, and obviously this is something that will have to happen in um, with the with the blessing of the South Nation as well, because it is it is a totem pole and it's not necessarily um, a native uh, work of art that is is um, uh, a local work of art. So we would we would want to consult them as well. But this is just um, uh, is does council support staff looking into this, looking into moving the art piece and storing it until we can find a suitable location for it. OK. Thank you, Councillor. I see Councillor Logans has a question or comment. I have your hand up here. Yes, thank you. Um, Councillor Lajeunesse, who was the artist that made the totem? Uh, Carrie Newman. Okay, because I believe he's a member of the local Souk Nation. Is that correct? That I'm not I, sure. I'm not, you may not know for sure. I believe he is, but I don't 100% know. Um, but if anyone does, please speak up. Um, the only reason I ask is because it's it's just a bit. Um, I don't want us to make this decision. I don't think it's our decision to make. I think it's a decision to make by the Souk Nation first, and that we get consent from them, not consult, not have consultation with them on this. I know the totem was created for um, the Philip family and it is a historical part of our community. So it'd be wonderful to see it um, move to a visible place or, um, or if we can help find a location for it. However, I believe that artworks that are First Nations should belong to First Nations and not to the District of Souk. And so the word cons consult with, with the Souk Nation in this report, I find a bit offensive and I think it would be better for us to to obtain their permission to do such a thing. Um, I don't see it being a huge problem, but I just want us to be really aware of that moving ahead. Thank you, Councillor Logans. Um, I'm going to go to you for a motion to that effect, but I just want to see if there were any other questions from members of council first, okay? So I'll turn to members of council if there's any questions. Councillor Bateman, go ahead. Um, through you to Councillor Lajeunesse, was there any discussion in your spa uh, meeting about this uh, of a possible location? Or would that, that's all ahead of us? There were a few discussions and, and one idea that came up was that it could be located um, either inside or in front of the library. 
and there were a few other locations that were discussed, but um, none of this matters until we decide whether to accept it or not. Okay, thank you. Just, Any other? Oh, go ahead, Councillor Bain. Yeah, I just quickly in response to Councillor Logan's, uh, I've Googled, and Carrie Newman is a Kwakwakwak um, from the uh, Kuikam, Glixem, and Wallawabe clans of northern Vancouver Island in Coast Salish through the Stolo Nation. His mother is a settler of English, Irish, and Scottish heritage. Well, the advantage of the internet. Thank you. Um, Councillor McMath, please. Um, yeah, I echo Councillor Logan's statements rather than get a consultation more, much more involvement. And then perhaps the Phillips can be involved in that conversation as well, um, because it was a gift to them. And I was actually there when they raised it. So either way, if it stays with the souk or the souk, I'm just happy that it's coming forward and they've been thoughtful enough to donate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, and I think that those are, that's kind of the, the sentiments of the SPA committee as well. Um, and this is just, uh, do we want staff to proceed with um, with those consultations? Okay, just um, from the comments here, what I see is sort of a two-step piece. Um, I'll go to Councillor Logan's for an actual motion, but I think the first step is that we obtain uh, permission first, and then pending that answer, then we can move to, then the, the, the rest will follow depending on that outcome. So should the Souk wish to, to have the totem for theirs, then that's fine, then, then the matter is completed. Uh, and then otherwise it, we would just look for the next pieces to come forward in, in that process. That's kind of how I see this. So, um, and then you could always just report back to the spa committee and just share that we totally appreciate their recommendation. We're just wanting to follow a path of reconciliation as we, as we move forward with this. Sure. Okay. So. Sense. Yeah, so I'll turn to Councillor Logan's, please. Um, do you have sort of a motion you could put forward? Um, I I sort of do. I, hearing that uh, Mr. Newman, the artist, is not from the Souk Nation, it may be that we have to consult with other nations as well, but we can certainly consult with the Souk Nation first and obtain some guidance on how to move ahead with this. Um, but we need to take the approach of receiving guidance and consent because having consultation with them on this matter is completely inappropriate. So uh, my motion would be something along, help me out if you can, but something along the lines of um, uh, that we obtain consent of Carrie Newman and the appropriate First Nations on um, accepting this donation. Okay, so something that council directs staff to and then your piece uh, there. So I'll just turn to Ms. Mushada. Um, there's sort of two of us trying to put this together here. Sorry, I'm um, back. But I just, <laughs> yeah, I just want to ensure that um, I just want, uh, if you could please just read out um, what you have there. Well, thank you, Worship. The Council directs staff to obtain consent from the artist and the relative First Nation regarding acceptance of the donation. Thank you. Yep, yeah, so that's moved by Councillor Logans. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor McMath. Anything further on the motion, Councillor Logans? No? Councillor McMath, any comment? No, okay. Anything from anyone else? No, okay. I, I appreciate this. Um, so I'll call the question. All those in favor, please. And that's carried unanimous. Thank you. And then the rest will follow once we obtain those answers. We can then look at what, depending on how this goes, what the next step is. Excellent. Okay, thank you. So next up is item 13. This is bylaws, our bylaws section. So the first one here 
Okay, it's item 13.1. That is that council adopt the bylaw cited as suit core sewer specified area amendment bylaw number 788-147-39-2020. We'll look for a mover to adopt, please. Moved by Councillor St. Pierre, seconded by Councillor Beddoes. We're on adoption, but if there are any comments or questions, okay, see none, all in favor. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Next up is item 13.2. Uh, and that is that council adopt the bylaw cited as suit core sewer specified area amendment bylaw number 808-147-40-2020. Any questions? Councillor Bateman, you're moving it? Or do you have a question? Moving. Moving, okay. And a seconder by Councillor Lajeunesse. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor, please. And that's carried unanimously. Next up is item 13.3, unsightly premise. So this here is that council adopt the bylaw cited as unsightly premise and objectionable situations amendment bylaw number 811-296-1, 2021. So just for members of the public, these are all items that council has deliberated over and has passed three readings of. So that's why there's a break and then they're here for adoption. That's why we're so quiet. So moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor uh, Logans, please. Thank you. I'll call the question. All those in favor, please. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. And then item. 13.4. So this one is different here. I'll turn this to staff, please, to walk us through the report. Thank you, Your Worship. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, but I'll just give you a brief overview of the report. Um, as Council may recall, this was um, identified in Council's strategic priorities last year in 2020, was a review of the bylaw and the business license policy. So these are coming forward you, to you tonight together. Um, the bylaw has been reviewed to modernize it, and that was Council's direction. Um, so we've re removed some unnecessary terms and language throughout, uh, reformatted it uh, to more, more closely mirror our application and licensing process, added a reference to the inter-community business licenses that were um, adopted in 2018, added provisions for license suspensions and cancellations, clarity about licensing exemptions and removal of Schedule A intermunicipal business categories. And then um, Council had also directed that cannabis be included. That has been done as well as some items that were identified by the uh, business license inspector, which were the addition of vehicles for hire, the addition of farm stands and farm retail sales and mobile food vendors. Uh, short-term rental, vac short-term vacation rentals have not been addressed as we believe that is going to arise organically through the Economic Development Committee. Um, so we didn't want to go and put some regulations out there that may end up changing in a few months. Um, as for the policy, that really has just been um, brought into our uh, policy framework template and modernized, no real... Um, significant changes to that. So that's all I have. If council has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Mushada. I'll turn to members of council for questions or comments, questions for staff. Okay, so the one I have is for mobile food vendors. Uh, we are seeing an increase of, of this dining option. Um, come out this way. Uh, I am hearing a little bit that it may be having a negative impact on our brick and mortar restaurants that are currently in our community, um, though recognizing that COVID has a whole other layer of impact on uh, our dine-in services. So, so I just feel that it may be worthy of a community conversation um, around that. I don't know that this is the appropriate one because it's more dealing with the licensing 
of uh, of the various businesses. But at some point, I think it would be of benefit to like, what are we opening the door to? And and just to understand the potential impact, both negative and positive, that this may have on our community and the businesses that we have here already. Uh, these all pay significant commercial taxes, which is significantly different than a food vendor, a food truck vendor. Um, through your worship, um, that uh, conversation will probably have an opportunity. I know that our business license inspector is working on bringing back the uh, mobile food truck program in the parks again this year. There has been some interest expressed. So that is expected to come before council in March. So um, again, there will probably be an opportunity to have that general discussion about mobile food trucks at that time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Councillor St. Pierre. Uh, I do have a question. It might actually be the right time to ask because later on in the agenda in correspondence, uh, there was a Shroom Compassion Medicinal Society asking for a business license. And at that point, I was going to ask, what's our role in terms of this particular organization wanting a business license? So in terms of what we're, uh, of the business license policy we now have, how does that work exactly? I mean, this might be a good time to just get that answered, I think. Through your worship to Councillor St. Pierre, um, our business license inspector is working with the owner of that organization. They are applying for a business license. We don't have a temporary license um, in our bylaw, so they would, and, but our, our regular licenses are not uh, terribly expensive. So they would have to apply for a one year license um, and I believe that she has determined they qualify just as a commercial business. There is nothing um, related to cannabis zoning or anything like that that needs to be in place for them to continue with their business. So she is continuing to work with them towards their license. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Questions from members of council? Councillor Bateman, go ahead. You're on mute. There we go. You won't hear my rustling paper. Um, the uh, thank you, Councillor McMath. Um, yeah, regarding the the rec under food trucks and this this uh, use of the word encouraged yet again to use compost compostable food containers and utensils. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, from the previous Climate Action Committee, Catherine Keoghan and Christina Schlatner brought forward a report around um, how soup might deal with uh, multiple recyclable and reusable uh, items in the community. We also have a plastic bag bylaw that is in limbo at the moment. And it would just be great to move beyond the encouragement factor, as we'll discuss shortly in Guardian Village uh, recommendations, and um, move to required. Thank you. Okay, so now would be the time for that to occur, um, or because there's different readings that have to happen here, first and second readings. And so I'm just going to ask staff here. So if we were to change that into required, yeah, thank you, Worship. Um, if you can give first reading so that there's a bylaw to discuss and then uh, amendments can be made at either second or third reading. OK, so I think at this point, let's do that. So that'll be that council give first reading to the bylaw cited as business license bylaw number 778 2021. So look for a mover, please. Moved by Councillor Bateman and seconded by Councillor St. Pierre. Okay, all those in favor of first reading? And that's carried unanimously. So, following what Ms. Mushata has said, um, Councillor Bateman, would you like to, I'll put it to you then, uh, since you raised it, um, would you like to put that forward as a as a motion now? That count, it would be something that Council. Um, you know, this this you said comment. it better than me. I know yeah. I did. And unfortunately, I haven't reviewed uh, the report that came back from from Christina and Catherine. And I, you know, I need to prepare. 
So I'm not sure right now. I'm I unless you can provide me with some simple language. It would be something that council um, you said uh, require the vendors to use. It would basically be to strike out the word encourage and replace with require. I think that, that would be the good. amendment. OK, mm -hmm. so is that okay. the amendment you'd like to make? Would you like yes, to make please. that motion? Yeah, okay, I make so, that motion. So this would be to strike out the word encourage and replace with require. And that's moved by Councillor Bateman. Do I have a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor St. Pierre. So discussion, um, this would be the time to do this. So here's where we're at. Councillor, I'll turn to the mover and the seconder. Anything further? And then I see Councillor Beddoes. So I see the mover. Uh, do I have a well, I'll go yeah, ahead. I'll defer to Councillor St. Pierre who can speak okay. to this. Go <laughs> ahead, Councillor St. Pierre, and then I have Beddoes and Logans. Uh, I think that we're just really moving uh, in the direction things are going anyway, which is good. Uh, I think it's also a matter of reducing the cost of the district. So, for example, if we're actually not dealing with long term waste problems, it basically puts it on the vendors to produce to provide compostables, which are easier to deal with. So it's a nice way of actually uh, leveling the playing field a bit between the, the bricks and mortar that at this point are not in that situation, but might soon be and the uh, the food trucks. So I think it just looks good and will help everyone. OK, thank you. I'll go to Councillor. Uh, can I just go to Ms. Mushata first? I see staff has their hands up and then I'll go to Councillor Beddoes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I guess two things. Um, if we're going to make this amendment, can I suggest that we leave it here tonight? Um, because I'll also need to bring back an amendment at third reading to add um, a violation under ske the schedule for such a thing. Um, that will also give uh, Councillor Bateman an opportunity to review that report. Um, I would suggest that maybe it needs to go a little bit further. It seems to be putting a little bit of a disadvantage, maybe. I, I know that there's uh, room for discussion, but perhaps if that's a requirement of the mobile trucks, is that also a requirement of any takeout restaurants? Um, and I don't know what the additional cost of those uh, compostable utensils is. I believe they are fairly expensive. So just something to think about, but I would just ask if uh, this amendment goes forward, then uh, let's just leave it at second and we'll bring it back for third at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, okay, so we'll continue on. I see Councillor Beddoes, then Logan's, Lajeunesse, then McMath. Yeah, well, and unfortunately, it's basically what was just said. I, I have a, a lot of problems with one of these blanket that you must do this, and then there's no definition what each thing is. I mean, um, maybe there is a combustible straw that costs $3, and that sort of locks them into it, or there might be a semi one or it's just it's just too broad. I'd have to see more details. And again, uh, was it just applied to the food trucks and not all these other takeout people? Uh, I just think uh, we're going down a, a lane there having to define what each individual item is and who decides whether it's approved or not. I mean, there's I've been to a lot of takeout places and some have wooden spoons, some have no spoons and uh, I, I just think it's it's far too broad uh, to to throw onto any industry uh, at this point in time without some uh, greater consultation with 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 the food trucks to see what is feasible, reasonable, and feasible. I, I don't mind going this direction. I, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, but to just put it as a a blanket that you must, uh, I'm dead set against that. Not we don't have enough information to say that. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Logan's next. Thank you. Um, I do appreciate the sentiment here, but I agree that we can't move ahead with this tonight. It, there is a lot more discussion that needs to be had. Um, for one, during COVID, it may be extremely difficult to source such products. Um, it might be additionally expensive to source such products because so many businesses are going uh, through takeout. Another it, question I would want to discuss is whether we should also consider such a thing for all takeout businesses, or is it just something that we're essentially punishing food 
mobile food vendors for, <laughs> as opposed to implementing positively throughout our community. We can certainly take a more positive spin on this, help people through uh, incentivization perhaps in some way or another, but I'd rather see us support our community than, uh, than punish them <laughs> with a bylaw that, uh, that creates a, a fee associated with not following this, especially during a time where it might be really challenging um, to do that, even if if folks want to. I I do again appreciate the sentiment. I think we do need to move in that direction rather quickly, hopefully as soon as possible. But uh, to do that on the fly tonight is a bit much. So I think this is a separate motion um, than moving this bylaw ahead tonight. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Lajeunesse and McMath. Yeah, I agree with everything that's been said. I think um, uh, I would like to see to see us move in this direction, but not. Um, I don't want to shoot from the hip on it either. Um, and the other question, I guess, is uh, what about enforcement? Are are we going to have to hire another bylaw officer to enforce this bylaw? Because it seems like it might uh, it might get a little bit unwieldy that way, and if there's no point having bylaws if we're not going to be able to enforce them. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll go to Councillor McMath, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Now is definitely not the time, especially with COVID. Those, all those restaurants, the takeout trucks, every local company, every independent business that we just talked about supporting so strongly, and some of our previous agenda items. This would just be another hurdle for them to get over, and they're struggling right now. We have definitely made having the green lens a forefront of our strategic initiatives. So I just don't want us to get caught up in little stuff that is is good intention, but is ultimately detrimental or hinders our local businesses. There is a way to have your economic development and your green lens complement each other and work together. And just this is one of those pieces where it sort of it does the opposite, although I, I understand where Councillor Bateman is coming from. OK, very good. Um, back to Councillor Bateman, please. So yeah, so as, as I said at the outset, I look forward to the day one day when recommended becomes required. So. Obviously, there's a lot of lot of steps between those two polarities. So I'd be happy to withdraw this motion at this point because you know to go down this path is going to require a lot of staff time, a lot of um, engagement out into the community. I think we have, and it's not in our strap plan, ipso facto, and it's a motion on the fly. So bad me, naughty. <laughs> no, it's it's all good. That. So I'd like to withdraw that. Um, it, is the seconder comfortable withdrawing the motion? Uh, I'm comfortable with withdrawing it. I was also comfortable with just moving it along as uh, Ms. Mushada has suggested. But uh, if uh, Councillor Bateman wants to withdraw, I'll follow that. OK, so let's consider it withdrawn. Um, is that OK, Ms. Mushada? Yes, it is. OK, thank you. Just <laughs> I just want to make sure. OK, so then that's a good discussion, though. Uh, so I'm now going to go to second reading. So that would be that council gives second reading to the bylaw cited as business license bylaw number 778 2021. Is there a mover for second reading? OK, moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor Lajeunesse. <coughs> Any further comments? OK, all those in favor, please. And that's carried unanimous. Thank you. And uh, that part there is and that council directs staff to give notice of the proposed bylaw change in accordance with section 59 of the community charter. So I'll look because we broke these up. So I'm going to look for a mover for this part. Moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor McMath. It's all in the first recommendation, but we've sort of broken that up there. So call the question. All those in favor, please. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, yes, we'll do a health break right after this. And then that takes us right to item two here. 
that council and we can do these all on the same night and that is that council adopt co-012 business license policy and that council rescind policy 9.5 business license policy 2007. So I'll look for a mover please. Moved by Councillor Logans and seconded by Councillor Lajeunesse. Any comments or questions? Comments? No. All those in favour please. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. So at this juncture, we're going to take a short recess here of say five minutes and we'll see you back here at about 829. Thank you. <sighs> Tony, your microphone's on.
How you doing, Jeff? You enjoying life? <laughs> yeah, it's a good life. <laughs> Aren't yeah. we lucky? My I know. Isn't this COVID stuff just absolutely turned things upside down, eh? Yeah. As a quasi-introvert, I kind of like it, <laughs> weirdly. Uh, Same here, I get it. <laughs> yeah, well... It's hard to say what normal is. Eh? You can imagine that there's uh, some grandparents have not seen their grandkids now for a year, year mm -hmm. and a half, and uh, the kids grow so quickly. Uh, you can really lose touch with them, eh? but it is what it is. We just have to get through it, and uh, that will do, I suspect. It looks like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but the tunnel's still a ways off. So unfair in the meantime, yeah. Mm. We're also very lucky to live in a time where we have Zoom and FaceTime and cell phones and text messages. So, And the ability to, to, to come up with a, an antidote to this. I mean, uh, 10 years ago, they would not have been able to do it this fast, you mm -hmm. know, with, with the new systems that they use. We'd have to wait two and three years and kill countless millions of people. Uh, anyways, we're, we're here, we're doing it, we're getting by. So... Uh, we're above ground. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> above ground is positive. Yeah. <laughs> OK, everyone, now I'll just turn your attention back to the agenda. Thank you for the break. Just checking my blood pressure. OK, <laughs> so that takes us to item 14.1, which is a notice of motion. So this was presented by Councillor Beddoes at our February 8th meeting. So tonight, the motion then would be that council considers Diane Morin's request for $500 to put on a virtual art exhibition for Mental Health Awareness Week. So this has been moved by Councillor Beddoes via the notice of motion. So now we'll look for a seconder and then we can look for discussion. So moved by sec seconded, sorry, by Councillor McMath. So I'll go back to Councillor Beddoes as you introduce the item as a notice of motion. If you'd like to speak on this first, please, then Councillor McMath. Yeah, back in uh, December 14th when it came before council and uh, Diane Moran made a presentation, a very, very nice presentation. Uh, but for some reason, um, it got lost and it was left to one of us to make a notice of motion. And it never was. And I felt it was really unfair uh, to someone to ask us a question and nobody ever get back to them. So I wanted to bring it forward today, and I am in favor of this motion, but uh, at least give an answer to this person uh, that, uh, you know, they, they made all that effort and never heard from us. So I didn't think it looked very good. And the second part, when it's in regards to kindness, and it just goes into uh, what we're doing with COVID, and uh, it involves kids, it involves the Amber Academy, I just think for $500, it's a really good fit for our community, and I, and I would like to support this. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor McMath as a seconder, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, my computer is kind of freezing, so that's why I keep asking. Um, okay. Yeah, it's such a it's such a small amount, and and before we sort of came back to the meeting, we were just discussing the challenges with COVID, and and one of the positive is positives that has come from COVID is that the discussion around mental health and the struggles that people go through has has come a lot more forward so happy to to support this and it, yeah it's, it's such an insignificant amount in comparison to what we have for our budget so yeah i'm in support okay i suppose what i would like to do is propose a an amendment and that would be after the word week at the end just put a comma and put from council contingency uh, just so we identify the source of the funds. We always need to know that. So I'm just going to suggest it's, I'm going to move that as an amendment that we do that comma from council contingency. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Bateman. So it's just speaking on that briefly, it's just to identify the source is all. So maybe what I'll do is call the question on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment? And that's carried unanimously. So now on the main amended motion, are there other comments? I'll turn to Councillor Logan's, please. Um, I just have a question and maybe I missed this before uh, or maybe it's been updated since. Does anyone know if they did obtain uh, additional sponsorship from the JDF 
uh, sorry, JDF, and also I think there was another one they were looking for, um, remote run through, and a couple others. I'm not aware of the JDF. Like often those do come to the CRD board. Um, I don't recall seeing it there though. And I don't know if that may be because there's some, the CRD has different purchasing authority than we do. So not everything may even flow to the board. So I'm sorry, I don't know that answer. That's okay. Um, my only thought on that is that if we are potentially the only funder of this, um, it does say that our funding and sponsorship will be used for awards and prizes. So uh, cash awards of $150, first prize, second prize, $100, third prize, $75, um, and then some other things as well. But sorry if you hear my dog drinking water in the background. <laughs> um, but I, I don't really know what our policy is on uh, giving cash prizes, whether we should be uh, like named as the provider of that or what exactly the deal is with us providing cash in exchange for those awards? Good question. Um, I'm going to, I see Councillor Bateman has his hands up. Um, maybe I'll have staff answer that question, um, but I'll hear from Councillor Bateman first, just while they kind of look into that. Go yeah, ahead, Councillor so Bateman. Just, just on that subject, uh, there is $500 for uh, framing matting and title cards for displays. So that's not a prize. Um, so we could specify that. And I also just wanted to, to point out that Mrs. Moran is requesting a formal proclamation from the mayor and council, in addition to the funding, to recognize BC Youth Week and Mental Health Awareness Week. Yep, so with our, I'm going to answer the proclamation piece. So, we do have a policy and I can just look to do that. It doesn't require a council resolution. So thank you for the reminder there. Uh, I would happy be happy to make that proclamation. So I'll just have staff follow up with me on that so we can get something out and then circulate it out. Um, but I'll go to staff now in terms of the expenditures. I Can you maybe answer us here on the, uh, you know, if we were to issue the $500, do we need to specify how it's spent? Uh, and can we have that turn around into the cash prizes per Councillor Logan's comments? Uh, through your worship. Oh, do you want to take it, Ms. Gray? No, you. sorry, you can go ahead. I was just trying to pull up the um, file. My apologies, it's my first day back, so. I'm not fully up to speed on the agenda here, so just if Carolyn can speak to it while I'm doing some digging. That would be appreciated. Welcome back. Welcome back, Ms. Gray. Under our community grant and sponsorship policy, um, if this is to be considered a policy, and I would defer to Ms. Gray if there is actually $500 remaining in our sponsorship budget for the year, it could be appropriate to come from that budget rather than council contingency. Um, sponsorships can be considered up to $500 and there are no stipulations around that. And then grant funding just says that it's to be used for the purpose for which it was requested. Okay. There's specific on cash prizes or anything like that. I'm fine with, I, I, you know, I just put that forward for contingency because it just, we needed to like, it's always, where is it coming from? And that's why we, we chose to do that. Um, if we need to change that, then fine. But if it can remain as is, that might be easier. Um, Ms. Gray, do you have anything further? Um, just confirming what uh, Ms. Mushada said is, uh, I was just trying to review the policy and just to confirm how it was stated in the community grant and sponsorship policy. So it could be a sponsorship that council considers if you want it to come out of that budget. I believe it's $2,500 is the budget for the year. Um, uh, normally a bigger portion of that goes to fund a, a booth or a table at the Sukarama. So obviously not quite sure what that might look like this year due to COVID. Um, <clears throat> and I, I would have to check because just kind of confirming with Mr. Bateman, I'm not exactly sure the 
we've all gone just to prizes. So like as, as uh, Councillor Bateman stated, if it's going towards other expenses, which is what we prefer than, than cash awards potentially, um, I can I can review that if they have other expenses that in theory they were seeking sponsorship for, which I'm guessing they might if they were seeking multiple donations for, from different organizations. Um, so I'm not sure if that answers the, the question at this point, but uh, definitely like we can fund grant the funds through um, either council contingency or uh, the sponsorship budget. Um, that's up to council's discretion. Either is available. Okay, and be more comfortable. Um, I see Councillor Logan's. I'll go to you in a second. Just to leave it from contingency. I guess my hope is that things may change, and we may have an opportunity, maybe this year, where community organization like things. The, maybe the province will hit phase four, and be able to do opening of things, and then there will be a rush from community groups to be able to host or do something so i kind of wish to i'm hoping that might be the case uh and if it is then we would have a sponsorship fund available at that time it's just so unknown i i really can't see past the end of this month really at this stage and but hopefully there'll be uh we just have to wait and see councillor logans then st pierre you're on mute councillor logans of course i am <laughs> story of my life. Um, thank you. I I do appreciate that. I know we already made the motion on it, but I do think since this is a, is a sponsorship, we should treat it as such and take it from the sponsorship budget. Um, we can always move from contingency into sponsorship, even massive amounts and make it larger uh, with a larger contingency fund later. And hopefully we will be able to do that later <laughs> this year. Um, but uh, if we did do, do it from a sponsorship, we could also perhaps say that the prizes are from the district of souk and provide that as an option to them that if they are using the cash for sponsorship please acknowledge that this is from the district of souk or if they do um or or in part from or partnership with um because our sponsorships are sort of like partnerships with these organizations who are doing great things in our community and then otherwise we another option is that we suggest that they provide uh uh the funding solely towards other uh, items such as the matting of title and cards. The only thing is if we don't know who the other donations are from, then we don't know their requirements as well. So it might be best to be flexible with it if possible. Um, because if we say we only want to do $500 for matting and title cards for displays and they already have a funder that says they'll only fund that, then that's where we get into trouble. So I think not knowing that question makes it a bit tricky to solely ask for it to be towards one thing at the moment. Okay, so what I'm hearing then is a, an amendment that uh, council replace the words council to contingency with sponsorship then that provides the needed flexibility. Are you prepared to move that amendment, Councillor? I'll move that. Yes, I okay. know it's a but thanks. Seconded by Councillor St. Pierre. So yeah, I, we know what we're doing here. I'll call the question, all those in favor of the amendment? And that's carried unanimously. Uh, so now on the main amended motion again, um, sorry folks, I should have caught that the first time around and saved us this added time here, um, but it just, as we're going through it, it's more clear. So we're supporting this, it's coming from sponsorship, um, but I think like anything, the district should have some, um, it, we should be reflected that we are the sponsor here and our organizations tend to do that. So. Uh, if we can just direct that back through staff uh, to the organizing group. Okay, will that suffice, Ms. Machada? Just. Yes, Your Worship. Duck. And we just want the organizer to recognize the District of Souk as a sponsor. Do you require that in a motion or can that just be direction to staff? That's fine, we'll to accept that direction. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll call the question on the motion, please. All those in favor? And that's uh, carried unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Okay, item 14.2 is the development variance permit for 6947 Grant Road West. So at our last council meeting, we did receive a thorough staff report and, uh, and um, 
and deliberated on this and the vote was defeated. Uh, since then, I had been contacted by the applicant and received additional information, and I felt just having gone there again in terms of what we're trying to accomplish that this is, does require a second look and I I'm in support of this. Uh, I'm comfortable saying that as we've already had a decision made on this. Uh, and so that's where it's here and. Um, and so I would like to move then that. But I'll open it up before we entertain a movement. Uh, I'll just see if there's questions here on this motion. Councillor St. Pierre. You're on mute. I was really happy to see this come back because the only reason that uh, I was not in favor of this development previously, especially with the affordable housing component, was because there didn't seem to be sufficient assurances that the actual reports from Corviday and from staff would actually be adhered to. Uh, since then, the applicant the proponent has come forward and I think made amply clear that they expect those recommendations to be adhered to. Uh, so I look forward to hearing what else, what everyone else has to say about it, but I'm very glad this has come back. Thank you, Councillor St. Pierre. Other questions or comments from members of Council? Councillor Bateman, go ahead. Yes, through you to uh, to staff. Uh, I know that back in 2011, the district commissioned a study of its major water courses, and that included uh, Knot Brook which is the subject uh, stream we're talking about. Um, I'm just wondering whether uh, staff is familiar with this report and whether there's anything in that report that we on council should be aware of. OK, I'll look for staff for a reply, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, the, the report that you're referring to, I believe, is the, the rainwater management plan. Um, for those watersheds in the area from 20 uh, from 2012. So with the uh, qualified environmental professional, they take into account all of these features as it's uh, relevant to the time that they undertake the study. And so based on that, there weren't any concerns. And so in terms of providing compliance with provincial regulations, it was determined by that uh, qualified professional that um, the the report uh, prepared by Corviday would meet those provincial requirements and so that there would be no further concerns with uh, um, anything on site or in relation to the uh, to the 2012 uh, report that you had mentioned. OK, and then a, a follow up is, is there anything in the 2010 OCP that would argue against exemptions to riparian area regulation guidelines? Uh, no, no, there isn't. Um, as it's uh, provided for within the provincial regulations, those exemptions are allowed. So the reason why this came before council previously is because there's the uh, 30 meter uh, repairing assessment area requirement. And so in order to vary that requirement to allow for any development in that area, a professional needs to undertake the necessary study, which was provided for. So it, it brings about that alignment by ensuring that the, uh, the relaxation will meet those provincial regulations. OK, uh, I did have a question for Mr. Wright, if if now is the time. It would be Mr. Wagner. Oh, Wagner, um, I'm I'll sorry, ask, Jeff. Right. Yeah, sorry. I'll ask if is Mr. Wagner still on the on teams? Yep. Yes, he is. Yep. OK, yep. go ahead, Councillor Bateman. Yeah, th thank you for your letter and uh, thank you to the mayor for the reconsideration. My, my one of my issues uh, last time was again back to this, the words encouragement and uh, required. So the parks, uh, our parks and environmental services branch have, have re encouraged the applicant to improve adjacent vegetation by removing invasive species and planting of native species. Um, and also consider naturalizing section of the lawn adjacent to the SPEA uses uh, recommended in the riparian assessment report. And I, I guess my concern was uh, that that leaves it entire. W would you be prepared to do those things? Well, Council Bateman, I would say up front that we try very hard to follow the provincial guidelines and um, I've done many homes in Souk. I've done other um, projects similar to this um, where we've, you know, extended uh, mobile home parks and added more um, pads. And the best approach that I've found is to not touch anything. You don't have to. I, that's my preference to be 
just blunt. I, I understand that parks encourages like, could you go into the creek and take this out an invasive species? But I've just found it personal is just stay as far away from it as you possibly can. And that's why the placement, um, actually, I've got it off my screen, but I'm sure you can see, we've placed the home as far as possible <laughs> that, that we can be from the creek. And we'd put it even further, but the, the town of Souk has bylaws and setbacks requiring us to be 20 feet apart from another manufactured home and then require the park to be five meters of landscaping buffer around the park. So we, we can't move it any further and still give somebody a home unless we made it ultra tiny. Um, so to, I guess to answer your question, I would like to touch the bare minimum on that property that I need to. Um, and we will have the fence uh, at the, you might see a 15 meter offset shown on the survey. It's our intention to have the fence at that location and let everything else pass that area, just stay how it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more quick question. Um, sure, there please. is that, tr that trail that runs from that particular lot over towards Millennial Park. And I know that's over private land. Would that trail remain open in your new configuration? I, I don't have a say over that, but I can tell you that in speaking with the park owner, it's his intention to try to not block that trail. He was very clear with me on on what he would like to see happen. Um, so that is the that is our intention is to um, create a home for somebody, create a pad, and then leave that uh, trail to be accessible. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wagner. I'll just ask you to Turn off your video again. Thank you. OK, thank you, Council. Is there any other questions? So I'll read out the recommendation. So that is a Council issue development variance permit PLN 01567 to vary bylaw number 600 Souk Zoning Bylaw 2013 section 3.22B to reduce the setback from a natural boundary of a stream from 30 meters to 10 meters in accordance with the Corvidae Environmental Consulting Inc. Environmental Assessment Report dated February 2020 for the purposes of accommodating a newly manufactured home unit, unit number 44, subject to the following conditions. One, that the qualified environmental professional demarks the SPEA prior to land clearing and construction. Two, that temporary fencing is installed along the vegetated edge between the area of the proposed works and the 10 meter SPEA prior to land clearing and construction and three sediment and erosion controls must be implemented before clearing and construction commenced. OK, so that's the recommendation. Do we have a mover for this? Let's move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Beddoes, seconded by Councillor Lajeunesse. Any further comment that you would like to make on this, Councillor Beddoes? I know we spoke on it two weeks ago, but I'll just provide you with that opportunity now if you like. Yeah, I thought the environmental assessment was uh, one of the better ones I've ever seen, so uh, I'm okay with this moving forward. Okay, Councillor Lajeunesse is a seconder. Uh, no, I supported it last time and I'll, I'm prepared to support it again. Okay, Councillor St. Pierre, see your hand is up. Uh, I still find that the the lack of specifics in terms of encouraging versus requiring frustrating. But I also recognize that uh, this is affordable housing. I do believe that manufactured homes present a good avenue into affordable housing and that we need it. So uh, I appreciate this coming back forward and I will support it. OK, thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Bateman? Yeah, um, I'll be voting in favor of this. Uh, however, I do want to point out to uh, Mr. Uh, Wagner that um, the District of Souk does take affordable housing extremely seriously. Uh, the Councillor Logan's led a, a committee that uh, dates back to 2016 or so. We have studies from the 2010s. We have the new housing needs assessment. Uh, we have affordable housing is definitely a top priority in Souk and has been for some time now. So just to be clear about that. Thank you, Councillor Bateman. And we Councilor also, Logan. yeah, okay. Councillor Logans and then McMath, please. Councillor Logans. Yeah, just to echo that, I, I was a bit offended by the comment in the email I received today that we don't take affordable housing 
uh, seriously, not only because I chaired that committee and we have the wonderful report that proves that we do and that we actively do, but also because I've lived in a trailer and not a trailer home, but like a literal trailer for two years in Souk and not because I was poor or because I was not well off, but because there was nowhere to live. So we definitely take this seriously. Um, I... I don't know where I stand with this one. I, don't, I still don't have some great feelings about it, uh, but I know that it will pass, so congratulations. Thank you, Councillor Logans, and also thanks to your advocacy and the efforts of Council, we have the units that are coming to our community in the not too distant future. Councillor McMath? Just to some of like those comments, I think like what you're hearing is you have a community member who hears you say that you support affordable housing and things like that. And, and just going back to our previous piece on like mandating restaurants or food trucks to have this, that they must have these requirements, they must use these utensils. You have a community who is expressing frustration because you're saying that you support local businesses, but you're you're blocking their success and like the intention is good and the intention is positive but the the outcome and the result is having a different effect than what your message is so in a similar issue here i think there is just it, it's a not quite a communication breakdown but you you're saying one thing and what the experience is is different and so i know that us putting in more staff and and having those discussions um, with community members it's going a long way but sort of some of the frustration that you're hearing, I think that's where it's coming from. So I'll be supporting this motion as well. Okay, my final comment that I just want to make is in this case, the applicant is present. Uh, in many applications that we have, we get extra clarity um, from the applicant that uh, enhance the staff report and provide additional information. We did not have that opportunity, so now we have it. And so perhaps if, um, and I know that not everyone attends everything, but uh, typically what we've seen over the past well, certainly since this council is formed, is the applicants have been in attendance and been able to just handle some of those questions. And that's that may have made a difference uh, two weeks ago. Councillor Bateman, did I see your hand again? Yeah, yeah, I'll just uh, say that these matters are complex and textured and there are environmental issues, there's affordable housing issues, there's discussion. And I, I think tonight we have with the uh, my failed withdrawn motion, it's, you know, we have to talk about things and look at them in a holistic multi-level fashion. Uh, I'm absolutely in favor of of more affordable homes. You know, we have nine manufactured home parks in Souk. I think we need more. But talk about affordable housing. What? Uh, and some of them are are among, you know, they're they're wonderful spots. We were driving around after Mowich Creek yesterday up in Lannan Park, Lannan Creek Park. That's it's a spectacular spot, affordable and community. So, I think I think we're in, going in the right directions. Yeah, and, the, and the dialogue is important. I think we need to take that opportunity when we can because we're so hindered to have community engagement with the restrictions. And so having the it, it's up to us here to be able to deliberate on this. Mr. Wagner, I see your hand, but unfortunately that we have a live motion on the floor that's been moved and seconded. So I'm unable to have you speak at this time. It's strictly up to council at this particular moment. Uh, Councillor St. Pierre. I'd like to make one final comment in terms of uh, the confusion that uh, the community might be experiencing. And I think that's a confusion we're all experiencing because we're dealing with a time of extreme change. We have a lot of changes we need to actually incorporate into the way we do things. Uh, I agree with Councillor Bateman that discussing it, talking about it, trying to figure out the best way forward so that it doesn't actually impact our businesses adversely is important. I think moving forward as quickly as possible is also important so that we can actually mitigate negative impacts of for example, the uh, the climate crisis that we're dealing with. Uh, I think it's a new status quo. Change is scary. Uh, the more we talk about it, the more we're likely to find solutions that actually work for everyone. So let's keep on doing it. OK, excellent. Thank you. So on that note, I'll call the question. All those in favor? And any opposed? 
OK, that does carry unanimously. Thank you everyone for your deliberations and your time and Mr Wagner for joining with us tonight. OK, next up is item 15 and that is correspondence requiring action. So item 15.1 is the UN decade on ecosystems restorations and this was postponed from our February 8th meeting and it's here in front of us today. So. I'm going to look for some guidance here on this. Um, Just looking for the item. OK, this is item 15.1. Um, oh God, what page? All right. Uh, uh, page 223. Thank you. OK, got it. Your Worship, it's Carolyn here. Um, they organization is advising that there is no staff time required at this point uh, and that was what council had asked for when they postponed this at the February 8th meeting. OK. So I guess it was basically okay. standing in support for the uh, ecosystem restoration or the UN decade on ecosystem restoration and the question was whether or not it would take any staff time and it doesn't so uh, I was hoping that we could actually move forward on this. OK, so this here would be for us to issue a statement of in support of this. So Councillor St. Pierre is moving that we issue this statement of support. Uh, correct? Yeah, and yes. seconded by Councillor Bateman. And speaking to it, Councillor Bateman, go ahead, please. Well, it's a, it's a decade. It's another uh, benchmark period of time to to focus. The UN is is bringing forward this uh, initiative. Victoria and Sanich has signed off on it. We are an early adopter on a bunch of different environmental initiatives, including Earth Day, uh, municipal mobilization, and so yeah, I think it it it's a simple, easy yes. Okay. Anything from anyone else? See none, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? And that's carried unanimously, thank you. Next up is 15.2, so this is for Earth Day. Uh, there was an ask in here and that was, um, they were asking to for confirmation so that we can repost the logo. So we do have criteria on how our logo is used, so that's why it's here. Uh, and I didn't want to do that just with. You know, we need to have some consultation here, so that's what I'm looking for here, and it would be that um, council respond. Uh, council direct staff to confirm back with our logo. I'll make that motion in celebration of and I'll add in celebration of Earth Day. So that's a mover seconded by Councillor St. Pierre. Anything from anyone else? Okay, I'll call the question all in favor. And that's carried unanimously, thank you. Um, the next one here is the flower count. Um, so in years past, uh, there used to be sort of an event where um, different municipal participants would gather together and there would be sort of a competition. You would bring materials from your home community and create something that would be shared and then at the same time sort of get our residents out to count the blooms in the community. So in this case here, it's the question is um, a do we want to participate and if so uh, who could be involved with this um, looking for a member of council to sort of be our uh, our liaison on this here I, I just i can't fit it into my calendar i i love the idea and i don't mind all the the uh the um the, the participation that goes with it and the fun rivalry. I just won't be able to keep up and I don't want to lose <laughs> because I've taken something on I can't do. So I'll turn to a member of council. If you is there someone that's interested and available? OK, see nothing. I'll have a motion to receive and file. <laughs> Move my councillor McMath and seconded by Councillor St. Pierre, thank you. It's just it's so busy. It's such a fun thing. So OK, receive and file. All those in favor of receipt. 
and that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the next one is the one, uh, the Shroom Compassion Medical Society. So, Councillor St. Pierre, I believe you had pulled this and had some earlier yes, I think questions that's been answered. Covered. I think that's been covered by Mrs. M Ms. Mushada earlier in our agenda. Okay, so motion to receive and file, please. Moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor Logans. And when we say that, we know it's being worked on through our staff, so it'll be addressed. It's just we have no action at this point at our table here. Okay, all those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. And the next one is Surrey Police Transition. So this came from two members of Surrey Council. Uh, Councillor St. Pierre has pulled it. Uh, it's it's quite. Um, it, there's quite a lot of information here. Um, it does have potentially have an impact on us because of reasons outlined in the letter, but I'll turn to Councillor St. Pierre on this, please. I was simply hoping that this particular item that uh, it was definitely brought to the attention of staff and that it was being considered. Uh, honestly, it's a little too complex for me to really figure out you know, how it affects us exactly, but I'm hoping for a comment from staff eventually. And obviously I expect them to be taking all this into consideration. Yeah, so this does sort of dovetail in with some of the other work with that we've heard about ecom and the cost impacts. Um, we still don't have that yet. Uh, I followed up accordingly as I was told by the uh, provincial staff to reach out to our base commander. That's where they directed me. He doesn't have that information, so he had to go to his uh, other superiors who basically said all oh, that available. That information is with the province, so thank you for kind of wasting my time and I have received an inform. You know, like you've, you, you should have just said the answer I was looking for. If you don't have it, it's just we'll get back to you. You know, I don't create work for me in time that I don't have to send me on all of this, so I don't like that, but there'll be more to come. And there's just other pieces. Um, it is complex, but you know, UBCM does have a contract management committee. Uh, I'm actually going to submit my name for consideration on that committee because they're looking for appointments there uh, from various sized communities. Um, and then uh, this is an ongoing file that Mr. McInnes and I are working closely. So I think at this point, it's just to receive for information. With more to come. Thank you, Councillor St. Pierre, and seconded by Councillor Logans. Any other comments from members of Council? I'll call the question then. All those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, and next item is Council verbal reports. So who would like to kick this off? Councillor St. Pierre, go ahead, please. So met recently with the uh, Intermunicipal uh, Climate Action Task Force. Uh, it was a very interesting meeting. It turns out that the CRD is now re-examining its uh, climate action plans. And so they're engaging in, in a lot of input at this point in time. Uh, it was a very fruitful discussion. I'm hoping for some good things in terms of what's going to come out of that. Um, met with the EMCS uh, Society. Uh, they seem to be doing well in times of COVID, to be perfectly honest. A very nice group, very professional. Uh, also very interesting that uh, student grades are up by 6% with smaller classrooms and less time in class. So there's a, there's a little factoid to file away just because. And I think there might be a couple of other things, but I'm forgetting right now, so I'll just pass it on. That's fine. Thank you, Councillor St. Pierre. Other members of Council? Councillor Bateman, go ahead. Okay, and yeah, I was at that EMCS Society meeting too, and welcome as a, as a long-term uh, member of that society. Welcome to Councillor St. Pierre. Um, it's we've had um, yeah, we're looking forward to your contributions and being a a connection to the district council that doesn't have to recuse themselves every time the society comes up. So that's Evie and I need to to step out. Um, and yes, as, as Tony says, uh, Laura Fulton gave us a report. Um, the pass rates are up uh, 6%, up to 98%, in fact. Uh, attendance is up during the COVID year. And um, there's much less school drama in that kids with social anxiety are, are much more comfortable this, this year. 
Um, on other subjects, uh, I attended the Victoria Family Court orientation session, uh, which is for new and uh, existing members. Um, the Soup Multi Belief Initiative met recently, and we're we're making plans for a uh, Charter for Compassion Spotlight video that will happen in June. The Charter for Compassion International has asked Souk, since we're doing some good things, to showcase what we're all about. So we've asked the mayor to to be part of that. Um, and also, I, I was involved in organizing a Souk One Planet conversation, which happens on Thursday at 5 p.m. Um, that's through Trevor Hancock from the University of Victoria and Councillor St. Pierre, uh, Michael Takeon from Transition Souk, and Andrew Moore from the Souk Nation will be um, speaking. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Bateman. Other members of Council? Councillor St. Pierre again. Yeah, I just remembered my lap, my two other things. Sorry about that. Uh, so one was actually that uh, CR Fair is working on a regional on a task force to develop terms of reference for a regional food policy council, and I'm involved with that. Uh, hopefully, we'll be looking at some more information coming out in April, and then possibly more action in the fall. So uh, wait for news on that one. Uh, other than that, the One Planet conversation, I did have a meeting with Trevor Hancock, uh, Andrew Moore, and Michael Takon, and I'd like to report that the theme and the focus is likely going to be on uh, democracy and engagement and uh, things like civic pride, so look forward to that too. Thank you very much. Other members of Council? Councillor Lajeunesse? Yeah, I got not much to report other than the, the I attended the Souk Homelessness Coalition meeting and as did did the mayor and and Councillor Bateman as well, I think. Um, and they had a very exciting announcement that uh, I'm sure the mayor will will tell you about. OK. Well said, thank you for that intro. OK, so I'll um, go with that. Um, as you may know, BC Housing has made an announcement that they have acquired the Hope Centre from McCola and St. Vincent de Paul, and they are going to start gradual transitioning of moving that towards supportive housing. There was a concern that existing tenants are going to be displaced, but my understanding is that McCola will be working with every tenant. Uh, not everyone would some may want to move, others may want to stay in access services, but my understanding is that no tenant is going to be a displaced through this transition. It is going to take time and some may not want to live in a building with construction that's ongoing. So I can also see that the Charters project and Drennan projects that there's work happening there. And so it's just a matter of timing. So that work is happening. Uh, there is some mental health. Uh, there is a mental health worker in place now, it is temporary part time. So there is an application to look to have that extended, but it's the first time that we've actually had this professional service out here doing this type of work. It's just until it becomes more permanent, uh, they're doing a lot of, um, they can't take on a lot until we know for certainty uh, where where the position is going. So that's work that the Souk Shelter and Searchin are working on together. So that was some good news, um, although when the media in this being the Times colonist phoned and CFAX, they were also looking more for the background into the Drennan and Charters projects, which we've been talking about like we passed those uh, last year, so it was kind of not new news to me. So one of them said, oh, you, you don't sound that excited. I'm like, well, it's it's not it's kind of dated now, uh, but that's fine. It still provides an opportunity. Um, for us to to share the work that's happening here. Uh, so that's happening. Um, Councillor Bateman and I are alerted to a bit of a concern of um, hunting on wolves and there's a serious trophy hunting happening within our jurisdiction at the moment. There is no regulation on wolves. It's open season all the time. And I just find this troubling given the good work that Wildwise in our community has done to sort of have us to bring us to a place of coexisting with our carnivore population. Like all that good work is thrown out the window because one trophy hunter is bored and has nothing else to do. 
So except take out our wolf pack. Uh, I, I just find it so disturbing. I don't want to go into a lot of detail on it um, in general, but uh, so that's some work that we're doing here. Uh, we note that there was a deadline for AVIC resolutions, but we have an opportunity to put something together to the UBCM. However, in the meantime, I believe Oak Bay is already putting forward a resolution, uh, so we are covered in that way there. Uh, earlier tonight, I met with some girl guides, a girl guide and a pathfinder at Municipal Hall. If we were there tonight, you would see that there's blue floodlights around the building. Uh, this is part of guiding lights and uh, to celebrate girl empowerment. So at every house in Souk where there's a girl guide, you may see that they have blue lights displayed outside to sort of advance that. Um, so it's unfortunate that we're here. I mean, I'm I turn on my Christmas lights. Uh, it's as blue as they can get, but um, that is happening. And the mirror was kind enough to meet us on site to take a picture. Um, some other things that are flaring up a bit is you may have received some correspondence with residents concerned about implementation of pay parking at other regional parks. So just a bit of a background, the CRD, uh, we have been acquiring more lands, but the maintenance is also increasing. So some time ago now, the staff recommendation, they were looking to actually significantly increase the parking rates and camping rates at the Souk Potholes campground to offset the maintenance required everywhere. Myself and others found that to be incredibly unfair. So why should our residents have to pay this significant amount, but residents say of Island View pay nothing to an enjoy a park in their community? So then it went out, well, then maybe we look at implementing pay parking everywhere. So that has also created a bit of a backlash. So you may be receiving some correspondence on that, but that is coming to regional parks. So then if it's not acquired through uh, parking, if that doesn't go ahead, then I think it's either first for staff to look at service delivery or then it would potentially be an increase in taxes uh, and then one could argue then homeowners are paying for more for every but so the conversation goes but I just wanted to share that that's happening right now uh, on the other night in terms of um, uh, media and emails um, the Vic I do sit on Victoria Transit Commission which is meeting tomorrow morning and there is a designated student representative from either it alternates between UVic and Camosun College so one year be from UVic the next year from Camosun College so they have requested in fact actually the email was they demand to have voting rights equivalent to the elected representatives around the table so there has been um, much of that and it's something that I'll take into consideration going in tomorrow um, I appreciate where they're coming from. It's just the university is, doesn't have taxing authority. In fact, it's permissive tax exemptions. There's a UPass system in place. And while they are 26% of the riders, we have significant transit demands out in our community here. I think this came about because the free transit for youth vote failed. And if the student vote was a voting seat, it would have passed. So that would have worked out well for the UVic Student Society and other students, but we never will have transit expansion out our way, which we desperately need. So my focus here is to get the the transit service that we need in our community to find ways to do it. Um, I think other local governments not represented it at the table. Langford doesn't even have a seat. Um, View Royal, Esquimalt, Sydney, Central Saanich, none of them. The commission is quite small and I have to think of my utmost to think of the lay elected folk that aren't there as we make these decisions. So it's something I'll keep in mind a bit as we go forward. And on a fun note, I'm doing a bit of a project thanks to Councillor Bateman with the Souk Literary Society. Uh, this came about when Th Charlene Councillor Th Charlene Thornton Joe of Victoria was doing her storybook readings. I know some of us had participated in that. Councillor Logans, I I uh, I saw you there. So Councillor Bateman recommended me for this project. So I am doing some video recordings, um, reading books that will be featured uh, in that way. It's just I've been having some technological challenges uploading the video. I think I've solved that now. I've managed to successfully get one done in a proper way. So hopefully more will come there. So I'll kind of leave it at that. There's also, it's been busy um, UBCM meetings last week, but a lot of that will be reported out in the compass. Uh, I did share with you that they are looking for another representative to the police contract management committee. So the terms are coming up and they look for RCMP based communities with populations of different sizes. So I felt this may be something that I can provide a contribution. So I wanted to give you a heads up that I'm going to put forward my name for that. Uh, and 
any expenses associated would be covered by the UBCM for anyone that's concerned about that. And then another fun thing is our staff member, Ms. Temple and I zoomed with Mayor Yamada of Natori City last week as well. Um, we managed to find a time at four o'clock in the evening and it was just a touch base on what's happening with our community. Japan is quite ahead in the vaccine rollout there. Uh, I think they are hoping to get the Olympics underway and uh, they just shared some of their ideas on, um, on just looking to build relations. One of them that's in my mind that I didn't have the opportunity to present because they were chairing was um, maybe they need to consider getting more women elected into office in Japan because I think there may only be a handful of women serving and I think our success as a community has been by trying to have parity as often as we can. Suk has done very well in in that since incorporation. More to do but that may be a way to introduce that there. Uh, and I'll leave it at that, um, except for the 911. Mayor Sebring and I have couched and have been talking about it. His staff are going to put out a poll to get um, the mayors together that, that are impacted so we can share what we've learned along the way and and see how we can strategize a bit together. All right, so I'll leave it at that. Anything from anyone else? OK. I'll go to release of closed meeting resolutions, which I believe we have. Ms. Mushata, is that we do have some rise in reports here? Yes, Your Worship. Just the one we did this evening with the or from the February February eighth meeting of the members of the land use committee. Okay, so should I just read that out? Sure. Okay. So the rise in report is um, from February 8th and February 2020, February 22nd, is that council appoint the following members to the land use and development committee for a one year term expiring December 31st, 2021. Councillor St. Pierre as the member of council, Brian Butler as a member of the land development community, Paul Clarkston as the members of the home builder community, Kyle Topelko as a member of the agricultural community, Neil Nunn as a member of the environmental climate change committee, Corey Elliott as the member of the Affordable Housing Committee, Davy McClyman as a member of the small of the business community, and Susan Belford as the member at large. We do have an existing vacancy council at this time, and that's to do with oceans and fisheries. Council at this time would like to just have the committee move, and we will look and review uh, posting for that other appointment in the future. Okay, so on that note, um, I'll look for a motion to adjourn, please, at 9.20. Moved by Councillor St. Pierre and seconded by Councillor Lajeunesse. Okay, be well, everyone. Um, take good care. We'll see you next time. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Motion to an oh, I have to call the question. All those in favor of adjournment? That's carried unanimously. Okay, stay safe and thank you to the public for viewing. Good night. Thanks.